Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the Jan 2018 POA paper 2. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And with that said, let's get into the solution. So the first thing we're going to do, as, we, as always, is take a read of the question, right? So this is, it says, right, the following, oops, I thought I had in that. Oh, right, so the following is a list of balances extracted from the ledger accounts of Best Bake, a small pastry shop at its year end, 31st December 2017. Okay, so let's take a read. So we have inventories, we have accounts payable, we have buildings at book value, loan payable 2018. So 28, it's 2017, 31st December, so 2018 is the next year, <coughs> which means that that liability is payable within less than a year. So that's going to be a current liability. We have accounts receivable, which sometimes we also call debtors, motor vehicles at book value, we have bank, we have prepaid expenses, so those are current assets. So we have another non-current asset, machinery at book value, we have cash, we have capital, right? we have wages owing, uh, which is a liability, and bank loan 2025, right? so that one, <laughs> that's a non-current liability. Now what do they want? They said prepare a classified statement of financial position, balance sheet, for the year ended 31st December 2017 using the order of liquidity. So liquidity in this context refers to the ease of conversion of an asset into cash how easily it is to change an asset into cash, which means cash is the most liquid asset. And most times we're accustomed dealing with an order of permanence. So we start with the non-current assets, land, buildings, first most of the time, and then come down equipment, motor vehicles, machinery, um, office furniture, and fittings, that kind of stuff. And then in the current asset section, we have stock, debtors, bank, cash. And we can have some prepaid expenses, some accrued revenue in the middle there. So basically we have to flip that and start with cash. But of course, you know, the first thing you need to do is head up properly. Please don't forget your headings. They attract marks. So you put the name of the entity, the name of the statement, the period to which it applies. And I recommend putting your dollar signs. Okay, so we start with assets and we start with cash. That's the 8,000. After cash, we have bank, right? Then we go to prepaid expenses, then account receivable, then inventory. So those are our current assets. And then we have our non-current assets, so motor vehicles, machinery, and then buildings. Okay, so that gives us a subtotal of 535,000 for our assets. Liabilities now. So we're going to start with the wages owing, then the accounts payable, then the loan payable 2018, and then the bank loan 2025. It's going to give us a subtotal there, and finally, that'll give us capital. All right, so um, I've gotten some feedback from some people saying that their teachers say that my formats are wrong. Now, there, there is more than one way to do a balance sheet, right? Now, ideally, honestly, in this particular format, I should have called that net assets, and I should have put capital as a, as a separate section. So I will, I will, what's the word? I will relent on that one. I'll, I'll admit to that one. Also, what I have been informed um, by someone very close to me is that... <clears throat> CSEC is now veering away from the assets minus liabilities format and doing assets equal to capital plus liabilities. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to be reformatting quite a bit of my balance sheets. I should have done it for this one. So I do apologize if this format doesn't meet your expectations. But all you really have to do is you have to close it off here, right? Um, actually, I could do that now. You could close it off there if you want, right? And what you could do as well. So let's, let's, um, hold on. Eh? Uh, so da -da -da -da, boom, right. So what we're going to do is we are going to take off the things there and then we're going to put um, total, oops, sorry, right. I need to just apply something there first, right? Right, so total, capital, and, li and liabilities. Right, so we're going to add those two things together. 535. Right, so in this case, this kind of, um, is more along the lines of what CSEC is looking for these days. Assets on top and liabilities and capital below. And in terms of liquidity, um, usually it's easier to pay off your liabilities than to repay your capital. Although I guess that is contextual. It could very well be easier to pay off your capital than maybe your liabilities. But normally capital is considered to be more permanent than liabilities. Right? Permanent means long-lasting. And 
the contribution by the owner is expected to be a permanent contribution from which the owner will get, um, for, sorry, and from the profits of the business over the life of the business, the owner will get a return on his or her investment. That return is expected to kind of reward the owner for investing his or her capital, which, relative, which kind of remains in the business. So again, capital is more permanent than liabilities, hence in order of liquidity, liquidity it will come last. All right. Of course, if anybody has any disagreements, dissenting viewpoints, I am open to discussion, right? Be nice, if that's the case, make a comment below and we can talk about it. All right. Okay, now that balance sheet, let's scroll along on this a little bit so you can see how many marks was, yeah, 10 marks, right? So again, a minute and a half per, per mark means that's going to take you about 15 minutes to do that balance sheet. Okay, now let's take a look at what else they want us to do. So in the table below, state the effect of the following transactions on the balance sheet equation. Transaction one is done for you as an example. So they're giving you transactions and they want you to state whether the transactions increase or decrease assets, liabilities, or capital. So I'm going to scroll up <coughs> on the other side here. And let me um, see if I can get some stuff going. So assets, liabilities, and capital. So the first transaction is the owner deposited an additional 7,000 into the business bank account. So if the owner, once the owner is contributing any resource to the business, capital is increasing. So that's why you're gonna see under the capital section, it says increase. What resource is the owner contributing? Well, does it really matter? Because whether it was money in the bank account or it was a vehicle or it was inventory, all of those things are assets. And the assets are, well, the, uh, that particular asset is increasing. So we have increase for both of them. All right, let's take a look at two. So two, three, and four, those things, those are the ones we really have to do because one was an example. So the owner paid accounts payable of $500 from his personal savings. This is something I've brought a few times over the past several years um, in, in, in different contexts, but usually it's in, in transactions and double entries, right? So this is one that gives kids a lot of trouble, students a lot of trouble. Anything the owner pays for with his or her own personal resources means anytime that happens, it means capital is increasing. And if the owner is paying accounts payable, it means that liabilities are decreasing. Remember, accounts payable is a liability. So we know for sure that the liability is decreasing, right? And capital is increasing because the owner is putting money, technically putting money into the business. Now, even if you want to think about it from a double entry perspective, debit and credit, if a liability is decreasing, we need to debit that account. And as you know from double entry, every debit needs what? A corresponding credit entry. And if it's the owner who's paying from his or her own personal resources, we have to credit capital, right? We can't credit cash, we can't credit bank because we're not paying from the business's cash or bank account, all right? So again, if you have any questions, if you need that one clarified, message me down in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out a little bit more. Okay, moving on. The owner took goods valued at $400 for his personal use. So the owner is very active in the resources of this business. <laughs> so if the owner, when the owner puts in resources, capital increases. If the owner takes out resources, it means capital is decreasing. But we don't go straight to capital account and debit there. We have another account, which you guys know. What is it? Because with a D? Good, I heard it. Somebody said it. Drawings, very good. You're on, you're on, you're on the ball, all right? So we're gonna debit drawings, all right? And we're gonna credit stock. Well, actually we credit purchases, right? But the thing is, I kind of overanalyze it because they didn't ask for the debit and the credit. They just asked what items are being affected. The owner's taking goods, which means stock is decreasing. Stock is an asset, assets are decreasing. For his or her own personal use, it means capital is decreasing, right? Because the owner is withdrawing resources. So assets and capital will both say decrease. And the fourth and final one in this part of the question it says the owner bought stationery on credit from paper plus limited costing 1200 so if the owner bought stationery on credit from paper plus limited costing 1200 does that affect the business so I, th I think this is one i had issues with when i read it the first time I'm like, so the owner bought it but did the owner buy it for his or her own personal use and if so would it affect the business's records at all I don't think so, right? Maybe the owner has a relationship with Paper Plus Limited and has bought that for his or her personal use, right? But they did not specify that the owner bought it for his or her own personal use. If you look in the previous items, right? In this case, the owner took goods value for his or her personal use. They specify that. Here, they said the owner paid something from personal savings. 
So that was specified. Here, they said the owner deposited an additional seven in the business's bank. So we could, that implies, and we could safely assume that came from the owner's private funds. Here now, they're just saying the owner bought stationery on credit from Paper Plus Limited, costing twelve hundred. So I'm in two minds about this. One, I think maybe the owner did this transaction on behalf of the company. Maybe the bill was written in his or her name, maybe not, but it was for the company. In which case, what would happen there is that assets will increase because you're buying stationery and liabilities will increase. So in that case, if you're thinking it from that perspective, the owner was acting on behalf of the company, then assets and liabilities will both increase. Okay, so <clears throat> I have capital and liabilities. Well, look at that. Why would I have that? Because probably when I did this solution the first time, what happened was I thought, okay, well, the owner bought something on credit. Hmm. It's seeming very wrong now. So maybe we should change that. Maybe we should change this and put this here instead. All right. So that was interesting. So I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Do you agree with that one? Do you think it's a different answer? Do you think the first one was correct? Do you think it was something totally different? I want to hear from you guys. Message me in the comments below. All right. But if, if you want a definitive answer for what I'm going with now, I'm going with this answer for now. Assets increase and liabilities are increasing as well because I think the owner is buying this for the company, right? <coughs> on, on credit and the, and the company's name is probably being used. All right. Again, if you think I'm wrong, I'm very much open to hearing your rationale and your justification. And maybe I, I might pin your comment if I decide to change my answer. Okay? Give it a shot. You never know. <laughs> All right. So for the next question, they want us to do a T account. Right? So um, it says the following transactions for the business took place in May. Using the form on page 7, prepare the cash account and balance the account at the end of the month. So they want a T account. So if you guys have been following my other videos, um, Whenever I have T accounts, I've been doing like a kind of top and bottom split. So if you give me a couple of minutes, I'm going to do that. Actually, I'm going to make it like this. Okay, here we go. So let's take a read of these transactions. So um, transfer 6,000 from the business bank account into a cash account. So if we transfer money into cash, cash is increasing. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So we're going to do that. Right? So it says first of me, bank, 6,000. So 6,000 came into the asset account. It came from bank on the first of me. Next, it says paid rent of twelve hundred by cash. Hmm. So if you make a payment, the amount of cash you have is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we're going to go on the credit side. We're going to put twelve hundred, the amount of money we spent. We're going to put what we spent it on and when it happened. Next, made sales of forty eight hundred. So we're assuming it's cash sales because it didn't say credit sales. So if we made sales, money is coming in, which means the amount of money you have is increasing. And to record an increase in an asset, you're going to have to debit the asset account. So we debited for 4800 the amount of money that came in. We put where the money came from, because that's important, and we put when it happened. All right. Here now, we have, on the 12th of May, received cash from an account receivable of 3000 So one of our debtors paid us. We're receiving money, so cash is increasing. To record an increase in an asset, you have to record that on the debit side. So again, you will see the amount of money coming in, 3000 on the debit side. You will see where it came from in the details column and in the date column, when did this happen? All right. 16. Deposited 1400 cash into the business bank account. Okay. So we are depositing cash into the bank account. So we're taking money out of cash, putting it in bank. So cash is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we're going to go on the credit side and we're going to put some information. We're going to put 1400 how much money is coming out. We're going to put bank, where is the money going? And we're going to put when did it happen? All right. Next, it says we bought office supplies for 800 in cash. Now it says brought. I think you guys can see it says brought, right? But I, I think they meant bought. <laughs> okay, so we're spending money. So our money is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we're going to go on the credit side. We're going to put how much money we spent, 800. We're going to put what we spent it on, office supplies, and we're going to put when this happened, right? So all those things are very important. Um, if there's a folio column, I mean, and they, and they tell it to fill it out, you can do that too, if you know how. But most times they don't, they don't worry about the folio column. And 29th, paid wages of 5,000 by cash. Okay. 
So if you make a payment, the amount of money you have is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you're going to have to go on the credit side and enter how much you spent on what you spent it and when did this happen. Okay, so now we have to balance off the account at the end of the month. So we have on this side, this is about 13,800. And this side, that's 7,800, I think. All right. So the balance will be carried on from the credit side, 5,400. And of course, the totals will match as well. All right. Okay, so ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, right? Please don't forget to check out these other playlists to check out some more solutions. Don't forget to check out my website um, for free POA handouts and don't forget to subscribe. Anyhow, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.